everyone. And yeah, you better. You know, you better. In. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, with that in mind, you know, Jared, thanks for being on. Uh, today, we've got Jared with Manatee Pressure Washing Supply and Repair out of Bradenton, Florida. Uh, man, if you guys are in this space, I think you know these guys. They are all over the internet, um, and they're doing some really cool stuff. Today... We wanted to talk a little bit about a new player on the block, and I don't mean that from a company standpoint or anything, but in the world of engines that are powering our machines. Um, you know, the world's changing, and what's available, what's not available, what we can use, what we can't use, it's it's a fast-moving target. And I think that's kind of led all of us to be open to look to some new things, and yeah. there's some new stuff on the market. Um, so, Jared, before I, we jump into it, man, thanks for thanks for hopping on and, and uh, having a conversation with me. Yes, sir. It's my pleasure. It's a blast. <laughs> so what we want to talk about today is um, a new engine on the market. It's the F&A Simpson CRX line of engines, specifically the uh, the 680, which is a twin cylinder engine. Um, and, and I wanted to bring you on today because we see what you guys are doing and you you might have the most experience with this engine in this in this marketplace. Yeah. Um, how many machines? I mean, how many at this point? How many machines have you guys built with with this engine on it? So we've never we've never told anybody. So you'll get the privy information here. And uh, I talked to the team uh, yeah. before, and we could dec disclose it. And uh, I called over the guys at F and A too, you know, and just to make sure that we're all chat, you know, good chat and stuff. But uh, we started with them in February. We actually met. We we've known we've known the Simpson guys. Um, and we and we've never had any interactions with them because of the fact that it's a big box store brand, and you know regular people can just go in and buy their stuff at Home Depot, you know, and Lowe's, and that hurts that hurts our store validity because our customers are expecting to buy something that their clients can't buy. You know, they have to have commercial grade equipment, and so up until that point, it wasn't something that we wanted to even consider. And so once we were at, you know, another show, we actually met with Kelton, you know, and then a couple of the guys and they were like, Hey, we're, uh, we're doing something different, you know, and we're going to set this commercial line up and this is going to be, you know, something that you people won't be able to access, you know, necessarily with this line of motors and you won't be able to access it in, you know, big box stores, Home Depot, and the manufacturers like you guys are the ones doing the finish work and customers will will contact you and we'll work with you to make sure that everything is smooth and the units are are operating on a commercial grade level which was huge for us and uh and we're like you know we'll try it we'll try it and see we'll see if we can blow one up because that's typically how it goes is when we try something like our washers because of, of florida washing like they're cut from a different breed like when i when we built our first uh igx 800 gear drive that went out um, the, the guy that tested it put 150 hours on it in two weeks. And so it was just like, the, I'd say, or wow. in the, in, yeah, yeah, 150 hours. He was already just, just cranking, cranking. So he worked some around the clock and, and we put it in his hands because we knew he'd blow it up. You know, if it was, if it was going to fail, he was going to find the fail point. And so that's kind of our model with everything that we do. Like we run it here in the shop, we test it, put it in parameters, and then we put it in a washer's hands that we know, you know, is going to take care of it, but push it to the limit that it, that it needs to be operating and then go from there. And the, the, these motors, we were way more impressed than we ever thought we would be. Like we just saw it and we're like, yeah, it's okay. We'll go, we'll look at it and address that. And then once we got it and then the shortage happened with all of the other motors, we, we were like, okay, as an affordable option, let's, let's look at this. Let's focus on pushing it. Um, and then let's see if the power can can handle it. And the eight at 35 that we're running is dialed down. Like you can get more than that, but that's the market. That's what people are looking for is the eight at 35. You know, so what we want to do is always keep that machine running smooth to where it doesn't even know that it's operating on the pump. You know, where it doesn't load it down, doesn't bind it up. It keeps it operating smooth so it can breathe. You know, and when it's doing that. At eight at thirty five, eight at thirty seven, you know, close to the gun, you know, it's like, and it's still not not bogging. We're like, can we put a ten on it? You know, and that's how that's literally how the yeah. how that whole thing transitions. And and our tens with the six eighties will do ten at three, but we only advertise it at twenty seven hundred, and we set it at twenty seven hundred because we feel safe. Like it's 
there's no need to over push a machine and and ask for it to break itself like when it can operate comfortably probably years you know within this this normal parameter let's not push it if a consumer wants to push it that's on them you know what i mean like let them do it we it's still warranty all of this stuff still still will fly but we just want to let let people do their own thing at that point too and we want it to be for our main consumer of going no this is comfortable and it operates smoothly at that rate you know well when your business is relying on something to be rely you know something working right and not breaking because something breaks you know that that it starts a chain reaction right yeah I'm dying to know what did this initial guy find? Like how, how long was he able to run it? did he break it? Did it just, just exceed everybody's expectations? I mean, what did you find in that test? So I forgot that I never answered your actual question and I didn't want to look like I beat it around the bush either. Um, <laughs> we, we're, uh, we counted this morning. We're over 160 deep for the, for, since February, we're 160 deep builds build wise for just the CRX 680s. So we have 160 wow. of them in the field working right now. And that first initial guy has been the same as everyone else. But like everybody is waiting for it to, to blow up or they're waiting for something to happen. And, and they're like, well, I'll just try it and see, you know, they bought it and was like, yeah, I'll, a motor's not available. I need it for a rig. I need it for another, another setup. I'm just going to, you know what, send it to me. If it sucks, I'm going to have a conversation with you. Like that was everybody's conversation, buddy. If it's bad, you're going to hear it, you know, because they had to pull them off that Honda, you know, name, and to try risking their business money, which makes them a huge amount of constant, you know, income that's coming in for them and their families and their their workers' families, it's a big move for a lot of guys to make. And once everybody made it, like we just we were like we sent them out, you know, piece by piece by piece, and we're like watching social media, you know, like waiting on it to blow up. I'm like waiting for this to blow back in our face, man. I was just like, this is going to, we're going to, we're going to just have to, you know, avoid this chaos and nothing, not a, not a single thing um, up until this day. And so we're, we're now guys are running what two or three oil changes deep from our first cycles because of how much they're using the unit. Um, up until this day, I've only had one guy that had had a coil issue that he burned a coil. The other one, we had a failed uh, oil sensor. And so the, the machine wouldn't start because the oil, oil shutoff sensor had failed. And so that's like when you look at man, from a manufacturing standpoint and like how they're building and putting these out, we're like, that's a little piece. Like that's someone else's yeah. business that actually screwed up that that was a component to this larger piece that made it made it cause an issue. And that was that's been a great thing because they have been consistent and we've not had a single person come back. Not one single person. I can say that comfortably not one person has come back and said this thing ain't as cool as i thought it was going to be like everybody is like holy cow this thing is bumping you know like i'm like yeah it works yeah well i mean that's and that's a good thing for everybody right like you know you get you didn't want that blowback then i think that's that's uh that's a lot of evidence man that's a lot of that's a lot of time in the field yeah so you're getting you know good feedback from real world use Right. They're yeah. they're not blowing up. Yeah. Right. So that's you know, that that's a good check mark. They're strong. So like and again, I, I, I know I want to be careful because I, I don't want to put you in a position where like we're doing like the pros and cons between this and any specific motor brand. I don't I don't know you yeah. know where we sit with that. But like feature wise. What you kind of get with the package with one of these engines? I mean, how does it compare out there? Is it like because you mentioned like, hey, these these are kind of like you know maybe we feel like that Simpson might have been more on the value side of things. Is it kind of like a stripped down thing, or is it pretty feature rich and has everything you'd expect from something that has a more premium name? Right. I mean, honestly, if you if you told me walking into it that it was a Simpson you know, a Simpson branded name or piece of equipment or that they were tied to it, I wouldn't believe you. Like, and especially once you take those plastic covers off and you look at, like, they, they have the Walbro, you know, fuel system. Like, that's the same system that, that the Hondas and all the big boys are running. Like, the oil cooler that's mounted on the side um, to, yeah, and, and, they, and the paneling that forces the air through. Um, to keep it cool, those oil coolers are massive. You know, they're they're bigger than like we what we see on the 680 is close to what the 800 is reflecting on updates and changes, like of how it, how the oil cooler is larger. You know, like simple like things where I'm like, you can tell 
the guys sat down uh, with developing and in development, and they were like, where will this unit struggle? Where will it fail? And they built things around it to help facilitate it from doing that. So it wouldn't do it, you know, or so it, and it couldn't have the opportunity to fail. Um, so it's been a, it's been unreal experience. And then more we take it apart, we are, uh, we are like just blown away by the interior, by the internals and by the overall manufacturing that they've put into it. The, the team, nothing was thrown together. Like that's the cool part with it. And when I talk to the guys, um, when I talk to the guys about development and about the original, when they went to build this, you know, engine and like the team and how it was going to do, um, I don't know that I can say the guys that were involved in that, the the design and the and the behind the scenes kind of specs that were pushed out uh, for them in manufacturing, but there were some really cool race teams involved and some people involved in a lot of high places that took, they were engineers that took it on as like a side project to kind of go, yeah, you know, like, let's see what we could do. Let's see if we could build something that's, you know, in a small engine. And they, and, and like, once, the, when they told me that stuff and, like, as we were talking, my mind was just like, what? Like, okay, you know, like, so, so some cool, really cool yeah. dudes were like, hey, you know what? Let's, let's, let's do this. Like, let's put together a team and we'll build this thing and we'll just, we'll just send it out and, like, I'm not going to tell the world, you know? And, like, that's kind of been the whole yeah. thing where they haven't said anything. They've not talked about it. And it's, they're still testing the waters to see too, because they want to know, they want to know as the manufacturer, you know, and this builder, how well it's going to do. Like we don't even have manuals still because they're still being written. Like customers ask us all the time. Like, can I get, you know, you didn't send me a manual. I'm like, I don't have it yet. I will, but, <laughs> but you're, you're, you're the future, man. Like you're, you're experiencing yeah. it. <laughs> it's like, so it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool thing. But as a whole, when, when we needed a motor and for our customers sake, like our customers are out washing, like they don't have a choice. And in the end, no matter what, their business has to keep moving forward. And once we tested that motor and once we had had two or three that had about, you know, hundred hours on them, we knew that it was actually going to be a real consistent piece of equipment out in the field. And at that point it was more of a game changer. I've seen more guys step up from five and a half, or for from like I like I've had several washers that have washed for 20 years and only used the five and a half 390 units and they've been they've been happy with that and they were like you know but I'm I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a, a risk I don't want to spend you know 4500 bucks you know five grand on a on a big V twin but I'm gonna try this CRX and see what I like and everybody that gets it you know usually calls and they're like how do I turn it down like it's too much yeah it's got too much power it's got too much kick I'm like look we'll tip you down. Don't worry. We got you. You know, we're going to tip, we're going to tip into that and you'll be, you'll be fine at that point. But they still, that flow and that ump blows a lot of people away right away because they were expecting something small and it comes into a big package like that. Yeah. That is so cool. And I, I tell you what, as somebody who's like a total like gearhead, like hearing that, like there's like race engineers and it's like a skunk works project. With these, like that's just to me that is like that's so that's cool. The, like I just like the stuff vibe like I that, got. You know, yeah, yeah. That was the total vibe when they were, <laughs> they were telling me, and I'm like, and it's like they were up UK and they were all talking about you know this this setup, and I'm like, I wish that I I was sitting at that table and I'm going, I wish to God I had recorded this. Like I wish I would have recorded this conversation so I could come back and just relive it myself because I was just. I was learning so much from them and it was really cool to sit down and, t and chat with those guys um, on a consistent you know, level and what they want to do as a future, you know, and what they're planning, what their plan is as a company, you know, and they talk to us as being, because we are one, one that's moving the most, the, probably the most, most of these motors in the pressure washing industry for sure. Um, and it's, it's a big key piece. And they've asked us, you know, like, what do you, what do you want to see? You know, it's kind of cool to have them asking us, like, you, you want different shaft sizes? Like we can move things. Do you like this? Like, what do you, and you know, while we're here having conversation with them, the bill, you know, like Austin, our, our motor builder is going, wait, we get, we get options now. Like, hold on. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's consider this. Like, and it just, it changed our dynamic. We knew we wanted to start planning for some cool stuff in the future. <laughs> that is so awesome. That is so awesome to be on the front side of this. Well, um, Jared, I, I appreciate you sharing all this information and, you know, it's, uh, change is hard. 
Yeah. You know, we get used to things. We get used to how things are. We get used to certain trusting certain brands. And I mean, understandably so. The quality of manufacturing as a whole has not headed in the right direction over the past 10 or 20 years, right? Oh, right. Yeah. You know, there's, there's quality issues. People see it everywhere. And so understandably that people are like, I'm not sure about something new. But um, I appreciate you getting on and kind of sharing just from your experience, right? Like you guys, yeah. you know, if, if this doesn't didn't work out or they weren't good, you wouldn't continue to use it. I mean, there's no advantage for you to do that. But right. I appreciate you sharing the positive results. Is there anything about these or in particular that like, you know, we didn't cover that you want to share? You feel like, you know, guys should know about? Yeah. I mean, side by side, everybody's always going to compare they're going to compare it to a Honda. And that's what we've talked to. I yeah. mean, even the heads, the head ups there have had the same conversation is Honda rules the world of small engines. They always have this, this choke point has really put them in a unique position because they're not able to meet the demand. And that demand is, is rapidly higher, growing faster than what it's ever been. Like every store, that, that we've talked to about the motors and everything, they're not even allotting newer motors, you know, to the stores than what they purchased the year before. And when that kind of thing steps into place as a bit, and when you're trying to grow a business, that that's a bothersome statistic to worry about because if you want to gain new customers or bring new customers in, you're not going to be able to take care of your current customers and the new ones because there's just not enough equipment available you know there's not enough uh you know stuff readily available for them and so with the side-by-side -side comparison of the two i love it because the, the 680 motor has a lot of dynamics that the that you know like let's say the 690 you know has the fans bigger there's a couple of different things and and i love them both and we're an oem for both so i can't be like this oh well i like this one better than that Side by side, they both make the same amount of power. Side by side, they both make the same amount of performance with the pumps that we have, you know, hooked up. Uh, with the exhaust, we we only run the OEM Honda exhaust. So the exhaust with the the you know the CRX motors is extremely quiet, and so is the exhaust with the. Um, hang on one second, sorry. So is the exhaust with the Hondas. If you go with the OEM Honda exhaust, they both are really quiet. There's not one that's more quiet than the other, but I'll tell you, they both sound great compared to something with an aftermarket <laughs> exhaust pipe, you know, that's, that's rattling the pieces. Um, yeah. But in, in terms of smoothness on the skids, there's a, there's a ton of torque, but the torque is consistent and the, the, the units don't vibrate all over the place. There's not a bunch of chatter. There's not, there's no, there's no sag. There's no like up and down fluctuation. Um, you know, even when we, we do recording, I can, I can do a recording with it on a moat, on a cart, you know, like on a cart that we just push around the shop and it doesn't even shake itself with just the regular plate sitting on it. Like it's a, it's a beautifully, you know, adapted motor and that thing is strong as can be. And every, every area of it that we, that we see, what I love is the affordability aspect. And I love most of all the the fact that we have it available like it's not it may not always be like that you know they we may end up having a shortage everywhere for all we know you know how the world gets and a lot of times there could be a shortage um as a whole but it's nice to to have a consistent thing and we have not had one single issue in terms of getting more um you know or, or adjusting orders or even talking about parts like if, if we do need something you know a random part you know it's quickly you know, working with the team, it can come in. They don't even have, you know, up until like a couple of days ago, didn't even have a price breakdown sheet of the motor. And so it's like, we were, our techs are going in with their techs and like, all right, this is, we need this part, you know, like this thing, like sending a picture and like, there's no, there was no data to reference that. Like, it's not, it's a cool thing to be a part of something new. I enjoy that personally. And I enjoy being a part of something that's growing. And these guys have made a promise like that warranty, man, like no other motor manufacturers besides Honda have, have re are really pushing out a three-year warranty. And and to top it off, they're putting out a three-year warranty with no hour meters. So you can run this thing for, for three years wide open. Like there – and there's not going to be any way for anybody to go back and look and see and go, well, oh, you ran it at half choke for two years, you know. So that thing was, you know, not really good on that. Like they're not looking at that. They're looking at – 
consistency and they think that they've they've developed this motor well enough that it's going to perform no matter what within that three-year time period and we told them we're like well we're going to make you stand on that i promise you this yeah. like you, you will <laughs> you will you will want to honor that because our customers won't be happy if it starts failing you know like they they got businesses to run and i'm like and we won't it's like our conversations have been strict with that that side of it like we have to protect our customers bottom line that's that's their interest is, is that's our most important thing is the consumer of, of our products like they're they're the only reason why we show up here every single day like they're the only reason why the door the store you know doors open that's otherwise there's no purpose so if the equipment runs like it should and and if i can sell something to a guy and i know he's going to be able to go home you know go like I love it when somebody calls me and they're like, oh, my machine's not starting. Like, check your ground. Like, I know that nothing's wrong with the machine. Check the ground. Like, it's – and, like, you don't even want to be, like, arrogant like that. But I'm like, it's likely you haven't – you know, and they'll call right back. Oh, man, you're right. It was – the ground got a little loose, you know, and I needed to adjust it. I'm like, I know that thing was running, baby. I know it. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's – but in terms of, like, uh, reliability – at, at first, we were worried about consistency, and now I would put it 100% side by side, right next to a Honda motor. And before, and that, and as I talked to them, the team before this call, and about what we were going to be discussing, you know, they told me they said our, our plan was was not to play in the in the off brand motor world. Our our brand our our brand and our whole promise was to come in straight to the top and go with the players and be be someone that's a big contender with the other motor manufacturers that are actually producing good motors. We're not talking about ones that fail within six months, seven months. You know what I mean? Like they, they made that promise. And so far, like we have seen a lot of guys push these things really hard and they're performing exceptionally well. That is so awesome. Well, thanks again, Jared. I I really appreciate it. And if you guys want to see, a breakdown, a walkthrough, and kind of a breakdown of the engine. You guys have an awesome video up on YouTube. Um, I guess if you search Manatee and CRX on on YouTube, they'll probably yeah. be able to find it. It's, yeah, it's on their website that, too. Yeah, uh, if you type in the CRX motor on YouTube, it will it will definitely be one that that'll be recommended because it's a lot of time is on it. So yeah, check that out if you guys want to see like a walk and talk. Uh, around the engine. I know this was just a conversation today. Man, thanks again, dude. I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing this information. All right, Jared, <laughs> thanks again. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I guess we'll talk to you soon. See ya.